So here we are in the EX0 example from my live lessons repository, my GitHub repository. And you can, you can find that very easily by going to that repository and it's in the Java 8 folder. And this particular example just is here as a level setting exercise. It's just showing two ways of removing a string from a list of strings. And one approach here uses the traditional old school Java 7 features. And the other way of do it is to use the more modern Java features, which came with Java 8 and later. So let's take a look. Here we've got an array of names in no particular order. And we call zap seven first, and then we call zap modern. And we take that, essentially that array of names, and we turn it into a list using the of factor method, which came in, I think, with Java 10, if I'm not mistaken. And so we're gonna go ahead and remove Robert from that list. And we're gonna do it two ways with Java 7 features and modern Java features. And then we're gonna check to make sure that we actually got rid of Robert from both of the lists and print succeeded or failed, depending on what we do, what we get. And I think it would probably come as no surprise that if we compile and run this very simple example, that it will indeed succeed because I wrote the code and it should be correct. So let's take a look at the way you do it with the old school Java 7 features. So here we have a method called zap, takes a list of lines and a string that we want to omit, and it returns a list of strings. And so the first thing we do is we make ourselves a new array list as a local variable that we store in something called res for result. And that's a list of strings. And then we do good old Java for each loop, which came, I think, in maybe Java 5. And we iterate through every line in the lines list. And anytime the line in the lines matches what we're trying to omit, we just ignore it. And if it doesn't match, meaning it's not in the list, then we go ahead and add that line to the res result. And when we're all done, we return that list. So you've probably written code like this lots of times or are familiar with this type of code. This code is easy to, easy to write. It's reasonably easy to understand, but it's got a couple of glaring problems. The biggest problem, which will become more clear when we get into the parallel portion of the course later, is this implements something known as the sequential anti-pattern. And this code is inherently sequential. And there's really no two ways about that. <laughs> so you're just kind of stuck. Down here is a modern way of doing it using Java streams and functional programming features. The signature of the method is the same. It's called zap, except it's called zap modern. It takes a list of strings, takes a string to omit, returns a list of strings minus anything that was to be omitted but it behaves very differently. And unlike this approach, which is an imperative approach where we set every step to do, down here we have a so-called declarative approach where we say, hey, list of strings, convert yourself into a stream. And we'll talk obviously a lot more about what a stream is. Think of, of a stream at the moment as basically a, a flow of elements. In this case, all the contents in the list that was passed as a parameter. So that would include all these different names up here. So we turn that list into a stream, and then we use what's called an intermediate operation, which will filter out anything that matches omit. So we have omit, which is a string. And if we're filtering something and it doesn't match what we're trying to omit, we let it go through the filter. But if there's a match, then we're gonna go ahead and not let it go through the filter. So filter is kind of funny. Filter basically says, if the predicate here returns true, let it continue. But if it returns false, just drop that element from further consideration downstream. And then we're all, when we're all done, we call the collect method. Collect is what's known as a terminal operation. And in this case, we're going to take all the non-omitted elements in the stream at this point, and we're going to collect them into a list. And so when we're all done, we then convert the stream back into a list and we return the list as the result of zap modern. Now, this code, you know, it's, it's about the same length in terms of the lines of code, but it's got a bunch of advantages over this code. First of all, we don't have to remember to initialize the local variable. I can't tell you the number of times when I started learning Java, 
but I forgot to do that. So I get null pointer exceptions galore. But the, the bigger reason this is a win is because we can trivially change this code from sequential to parallel by saying dot parallel stream as opposed to dot stream. And that's something you just simply cannot do with this code up here. It would take a lot of work to make that run in parallel. So that's that's really the big selling point here. Now, of course, there's other selling points too about less error prone, more intuitive if you understand declarative programming and functional programming and so on and so forth. And there's also really no side effects. In this case, we'll see a lot of that. You'll see a lot of that in the videos. So that's the end of the first programming example. Nothing earth shattering, just kind of illustrating in a nice, gentle way the differences between traditional Java 7 style programming or you know, pre modern Java programming. You could do this in Java 5 too, and mo so called modern Java programming using streams and functional programming features in this particular case, like uh, method references and so on, in the context of modern Java.